Yo, yo, yo! Welcome back, everybody. All right, so I hope your first worksheet went well. And that's usually how things are going to flow around here. We're going to talk about things together on the whiteboard, explore a bunch of concepts, hopefully make them understandable and break them down into their core components and make them even simple enough for the average Joe to understand. And then you guys can go practice what the skills you've learned on the worksheets. And if they don't make too much sense, check out the solutions or even come rewatch a video and become a master and a boss at organic chemistry. Okay, anyways, finally, 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 we can talk about formal charges like I promised. And in formal charge world, there's really two rules. Number one, when you're assigning a formal charge to an atom, you would count all the electrons uh, as far as lone pairs. Each electron counts as one. However, if you're going to encounter a bond, maybe that atom, like a carbon, shares a bond with a hydrogen, then you split that sucker in half and it counts as one for that atom, one of the atom sharing bond. But obviously, I could just say it out loud, or we could look at it in a, you guessed it, example. Okay, so let's just look at the Lewis dot structure of water and let's assign some formal charges. Okay. So the Lewis dot structure, I'm sure you guys have drawn it before, looks like this. And I will prove to you that it is right, because we will go through the method. So we can see that oxygen is in the sixth column of the periodic table. So he brings six electrons to the Lewis dot equation. Hydrogen being in the first column brings one, and we have two hydrogens, right? So we got two electrons from hydrogen, for a total of eight electrons in the Lewis dot structure, and if we're going to count them all up, two, four, six, eight, and oxygen has a full octet because he has eight electrons. Hydrogen only wants two because he only has a 1s electron shell, and sure enough, he has both of them have two electrons. So as far as octets and valence shells, we are all square. Okay, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Let's explore formal charges in this Lewis dot structure of water. Okay. So let's actually look, actually let me this too. Let's look at oxygen. So here's the approach. You look at the atom whose formal charge you want to assign, and then you have to first identify which column from the periodic table it comes from. In the case of oxygen, he comes from the sixth column, which means he brings six valence electrons to the table, like we said earlier. That's kind of like the number you go off of. So we're going to keep six in mind, and then we're going to count the electrons he's kind of in control in, okay? And here's how we do that. So you count lone pairs, following rule number one, you just count them straight up. So one, two, three, four. Four electrons. And then we're going to take each bond that oxygen is part of, and we're going to split it kind of, and it counts as one. So we're going to squiggle through, squiggle through. So oxygen is part of two bonds, so he gets he's kind of in control of one of those electrons. So one electron, one electron, for a grand total of six electrons. So then once you've found the number of electrons that that atom is in control of, you take the number of valence electrons it brings to the table, and then you subtract how many electrons it's in control of, and then once you do that math, that's the formal charge. So in this case, oxygen doesn't have a formal charge, and it makes sense because he brings six to the table, he's in control of six, so he's net zero. In the case of hydrogen, you know, he brings one electron to the table, and you can see that based on the fact that he's only a part of one bond, and we split that bond and it counts as one, one minus one is equal to zero, so both of those hydrogens are also neutral. So really, all you need to be able to do to be a god or goddess at formal charges is be able to count lone pairs, split bonds in half and count them as one, figure out where an atom is on the periodic table and determine it's the number of valence electrons it brings to the table and subtract the two numbers and then you've got it in the bag. Okay, but you guys are way smarter than that. So we obviously need to get this, make this a little harder, kick it up a notch, but I have full faith that you guys can handle it. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a structure right now and it's going to be in loose dot and not bond line just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay, so if I draw this right here, eventually you guys will be able to name this structure and many, many more. 
But if I were to draw this structure, I want you to pause the video. See if you can figure out there's one formal charge in the structure, and I kind of want to see if you can figure it out. Take a minute. Okay. So I hope you took a second to see where the charge was. So let's look. Let's look at all of these carbons, okay? So carbon is in the fourth column, right? We know that. And here you can see that every carbon here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, they're all part of four bonds. So if we were just going to look at one carbon and we were going to split all these bonds, right? One electron comes from each of those bonds for all of these carbons, it would be four from the its valence, the valence electrons it brings to the table, minus four for a net zero charge, net zero formal charge, right? So none of these carbons have the formal charge. Let me clean this up a little bit. So I hope you spotted that the oxygen was a little suspicious looking. Let's take a closer look at him. Okay, so let's count the lone pairs. Two lone pair electrons, two electrons right there. And you can see that if we were to split all these bonds, right? One, two, three, one electron from each of those three bonds. Oxygen is in control of five electrons, right? Well, we also know that oxygen brings six valence electrons to the table. So if we were going to do the valence that an atom brings to the table minus the electrons it's in control of, we can see here that oxygen has a net one plus positive charge, one plus formal charge. And the way you would designate that is if you just put a little plus sign in a circle right next to that atom, he has a positive one formal charge. And really, if you can do that, you can assign formal charge to any atom. It's really not rocket science. Okay, so let's look at another example. And this time, I'm going to put you guys to the test and put it in bond line, because I'm sure you guys are probably used to it anyways. Okay, so let's look at something like this. Okay, so again, if you'd be so kind as to pause the video, put yourself to the test, there are two formal charges in the structure. Try and see if you can figure it out. Okay, so I hope you pause the video, but let's look at this together. So, if, you, if we were to look at each of these carbons, right, he has three implied hydrogens there. So, four bonds, he's a carbon, you know, he brings four to the table if he's part of four bonds. Each bond is, counts as one electron. He has a net zero formal charge. So he's good, he's good, there are two hydrogens here, and he has two bonds to carbon, so you know, four minus four, this guy's okay, that guy's okay, but let's look at him, he's a lone pair, and that is different than just splitting bonds, right? So this carbon right here, let's asterisk him, okay, so he's a part of three individual bonds, so that's three electrons right there, then each, lone, each electron in the lone pair counts as one, so two electrons for a grand total of five. We know carbon brings four to the table, and we know he's in control of five, right? Uh-oh, so it's not zero this time. It looks like we have a net negative one charge, okay? So to designate that, you put a little negative sign over here and in a circle. Okay, now let's look at this nitrogen over here, because we looked at oxygen, we looked at, we looked at carbon. Nitrogen, we haven't encountered yet, so let's check him out. Okay, so we know in the periodic table, nitrogen is in the fifth column, right? So he wants, he, he brings five valence electrons to the table. So now let's calculate, or just determine, how many he's in control of. So if we want to expand this a little bit, right, there are three hydrogens. So split this bond, split that bond, split this bond, split this bond, splitting four bonds. So that means he's in control, whoops, sorry, wrong color, of four electrons, right? So five minus four, if we're going to do some high level math, that's a positive one, right? So next to nitrogen, a little plus in a circle next to nitrogen. So really, as long as you can keep straight that you have to count 
electrons instead of lone pairs as individual one electrons, and you can split bonds and count them as one, then you are a master at formal charges. Okay, awesome. Not that bad, right? So moving forward, these are on the next upcoming worksheet like I mentioned in the beginning. However, we need to talk about another concept before you guys can get up and out of that worksheet number two. It's a little topic that I've mentioned before called resonance, and it's one of those things that will literally never go away. But don't get too sad because neither will formal charges.